The second and last video this week is going to introduce a second way of setting up volume integrals. The previous video was about slices, taking cross sections of an object along an axis and then adding them all up infinitely using an integral. Now instead of slices, I want to allow myself to break up objects into a wider variety of shapes. And what I'm going to do in this video is break things up into shells. Instead of slices, I can think of the object as a collection of some shapes stacked inside themselves. And I'm going to stick to cylindrical shells. So objects that can be broken up into a bunch of cylinders or rings stacked inside each other. And these cylinders can have different heights. The way to set up this kind of volume integral is, is generally the same as in the previous video. There's an area and there is a width dr. However, what is the area? Well, a very thin cylinder is sort of like a rectangle wrapped around into a circle. Its area is its height, which is variable in this case, and its circumference, which is 2 pi times its radius. I use the variable r here to indicate that the cylinder are all circles around the center point. There is a different cylinder at each radius, so r is the variable that goes out from the center of the object. At each particular radius, there is a height h of r for the cylinder at that radius. And putting all of this together and integrating produces a volume. Here is an example for some kind of bowl. This is a cross section of the bowl, and I can think of the bowl as a bunch of very thin cylinders radiating outward. This particular bowl is described by the cross section fitting between the functions x squared and x to the 4 for x from 0 to 1. The height is the difference between the two, x squared minus x to the 4. Since the x direction is here and going outwards, I can replace this with r, which is the convention for cylindrical shells. I'll use r instead of x, which means that the cylinder will, at each radius will have height r squared minus r to the 4. Then I set up the integral. The bounds are from 0 to 1. That's how far out the radius goes. The height is r squared minus r to the 4 and I integrate 2 pi r times the height. And this is another pretty reasonable polynomial integral. I split it up into two, do the power rule antiderivatives, evaluate on the bounds, and simplify the algebra to get pi over 6. This bowl is made up of pi over 6 units cubed of material. Here's another example. This one is a circular dome or a bell. If I take a cross section, I can describe this with the bell curve, e to the negative x squared. Again, I'll treat the axis as the radius going out from the center of the height, so the height will be e to the negative r squared, and I will go out as far as radius 2. So I have the height, and I can set up the integral. The integral from 0 to 2 of 2 pi radius times the height. This is a substitution integral. I can use the substitution u equals r squared with du equals 2r dr. The bounds will change from 0 to 4. Then after the substitution, this is just an exponential function. And then I evaluate on the bounds to conclude that the volume of this bell is pi times e to the 4 minus 1 over e to the 4. Lastly, I want to calculate the volume of a torus. A torus is the mathematician's fancy word for a donut. A torus is described by two radii, one larger and one smaller. The larger radius is the distance from the center of the whole object to the center of the ring, and the smaller radius is the radius of the ring itself. Here is a cross section showing the two radii. A is from the center of the object to the center of the ring, and B is the radius of the ring. I can set this up as cylindrical slices, starting from the middle of the ring and going out to the edge of the ring. What is the height of each cylinder? Well, this is a circle of radius b with, center, with a center moved out a units. And if I solve for y in the equation of that circle, I get that y is the square root of b squared minus a minus r squared. That height's going to be one half of the height of my cylinder, since it goes both above and below the axis. So I need to multiply that by 2 to get the height that I want to use to integrate. This lets me set up the integral. The bounds are a minus b to a plus b. a is the middle of the ring, so a minus b is the inside of the ring, and a plus b is the outside of the ring. I'll take 2 pi times the radius times the height. This is an integral that needs a substitution as well. u equals r minus a helps. 
I change the bound, and I get the new integral out of the substitution. After the substitution, I can split up the u plus a and then use linearity to make two integrals. I'll do the integrals one by one, starting with the first. This one also needs a substitution, v equals u squared, and this substitution works because of the u outside the square root, which is the derivative of the substitution. I've not shown all the steps, but this integral works out to exactly zero, so I can ignore it. Here is the second integral. This integral is a trig substitution, u equals b sine theta. I've shown all the steps of the trig substitution on the slide here. The trig substitution turns into cosine squared theta. Then, to solve the integral of cosine squared theta, I use a half angle identity to split it up into two integrals, both of which are pretty straightforward. I find the antiderivatives and evaluate on them on the bounds. And the result of the calculation is that the volume of the torus with large radius a and small radius b is 2 pi squared a squared b.